Hi, I'm Mike Blakesley from the National Association for Music Education. I'm certain that you all understand that the new standards being developed by the National Coalition for Core Art Standards are based around artistic processes. There are three processes with which we're all familiar from the National Assessment of Educational Progress in the Arts. Creating, performing, also called in some art forms presenting or producing, and responding. And the art form discipline groups working on the new standards have also come to agreement on a fourth category, connecting. Within each of the categorical artistic processes, we have a series of anchor standards. There are two or three anchors per artistic process, 11 in total. The anchor standards are common across all art forms and get at the standard for what students experience and achieve in their school careers. Now that's good because those levels of artistic processes and anchor standards are essential for unifying the standards and for explaining the standards to decision makers. The next level of detail is the one that will be most relevant to most teachers. That is the level of performance standards. Performance standards are particular to the art form and for grades pre-K through 8 mapped out grade by grade. That allows educators to drill down to pretty specific expectations for their students and by extension for their programs. At the high school level, we faced a challenge in matching the standards to a key reality of American education. That reality is the fact that for most subjects, with the possible exception of English, high school content is not presented in a strict grade by grade order. The arts are no different. Students can often elect a given art course in their freshman year or as a senior or sometime in between. So we elected to classify the high school standards in three levels, proficient, accomplished, and advanced. These levels are flexible enough to accommodate varying degrees of achievement by students during high school and from those who build for a limited time on their pre-K through 8 foundation and those who are doing truly advanced work that might be recognized with honors or similar status by the school. All that is common to the standards in all the arts. One difference in the way various art forms lay out the high school standards again stems from the realities of American schools as regards music. Different music students can take very different pathways in their studies, so the music standards are divided into strands to reflect those differences. We currently have strands for ensembles, for composition and theory, and for harmonizing instruments. Uh, think of guitar and keyboard. Some of the other art forms are holding open to the possibility of going to this kind of structure at a later date, but only music is currently following this path. The same reality in the school system that calls for these strands presents another issue for writing clear, useful standards in music. That is that the work in these strands, particularly in ensembles, often begins in earlier grades. What do I mean by that? Good school systems, at least good as we define them, will probably meet the pre-K through 8 grade by grade standards through what is usually called general music classes given to all students. Now that's in place in many districts across the nation. But it's also extremely common to offer as an elective string orchestra, band, choral, and sometimes other ensembles beginning somewhere around the fourth or fifth grade. Students may engage in these experiences instead of general music, or better, they may take them at the same time as general music. Whatever the situation in a given school district, this valuable component of music education needs to be cherished, encouraged, and explicitly addressed by the standards. So the music writers are working on drawing an explicit line down to earlier grades in the strands by appending earlier levels, tentatively called novice and intermediate. Following the same logic that dictates proficiency level approach among the arts in high schools, these levels can apply to different grades in different school systems, though they may show up in the standards as tied to one grade level or another for the convenience of presentation. Finally, and once again common to all the art forms, each performance standard will have associated with it a series of instructional support materials. These will include discipline-specific enduring understandings and essential questions, definitions that will help to operationalize the standards, and model cornerstone assessments that will guide everyone in thinking about how these standards can be assessed. Other resources particular to the discipline, such as specific knowledge and skills developed by students to achieve the standards, or the resources needed to give all students an opportunity to learn, will also be addressed by the individual subject matter associations that form the coalition. 
All in all, everyone from decision makers to educators to parents will find the standards a useful and accessible structure that will both provide a clear vision of what our children deserve in the way of arts education, as well as the tools needed by those who need to drill down to address for themselves the burning questions of professional practice and instructional delivery. I hope that this helps you understand these standards. They'll be coming out in June, and it will be a real help and a boon for us in the field. It will help us move toward our dream that every child in America get a full and balanced education that includes the arts.